Consider an 18 pounds lost. Losing weight is no longer a challenge, thanks to Advocare. Take on the challenge at loseaton.com. As you sit around looking for excitement in your dull 9-to-5 job, imagine adding a touch of excitement to your career. You need to become part of our KHTS team. At KHTS, no day is the same. We've never heard the word dull. We're currently looking for a full-time account executive. If you enjoy sales representing Santa Clarita's only radio station and our Valley's most read website and national award-winning daily email news briefs, thrive on creativity, are terrific with multitasking and organization, like to be involved in our community in a way you never dreamed about, have strong listening skills, and enjoy being part of a fun team, you should be emailing us at jobs at hometownstation.com. Your hometown station. Involved in Santa Clarita like no one else. Are you ready for a new pace? The Painted Turtle Camp, one of Paul Newman's medical camps for children with serious illnesses located in Lake Hughes, was caught in the path of the powerhouse wildfire that devastated the Angeles National Forest this summer. Because of extreme property damage and the intensity of the recovery efforts, their summer and fall camp sessions were cancelled. The Painted Turtle continues to offer unique programming at different locations throughout California. Camp on the Move has delivered the spirit and magic of camp to over 2,000 children and family members who were denied the summer and fall camp experience. The Painted Turtle will celebrate their 10th anniversary as they reopen in 2014 to host year-round programs for 2,500 children with over 30 medical conditions and their families, all free of charge. Visit thepaintedturtle.org. The Painted Turtle is part of the Serious Fun Children's Network founded by Paul Newman. Kathleen Madigan, the live comedy tour. Up until six months ago, I thought Fannie Mae was a candy factory in Chicago. Kathleen Madigan, Friday, January 17th at 8 p.m., Lancaster Performing Arts Center. Really? You're going to pay to be scared? I'll scare you. Here's a letter from the IRS. Do you want to open that now? <laughs> Kathleen Madigan. Because at this age, I could care less if a vampire walked in my house. But look at this mold. Check out Madigan again on Netflix and look for her new DVD and CD out now. If you've never taken a Lunesta but you've seen the commercial, I'm here to let you in on a little secret. That neon butterfly is real. Don't wait. Get your reserved seats on sale now at lpac.org or 661-723-5950. One night only with Kathleen Madigan. Live on stage Friday, January 17th at 8 p.m. Lancaster Performing Arts Center produced by Lancaster Performing Arts Center AM 1220 Time is 843 on your hometown station AM 1220 KHTS it means it's time once again for our Ask the Doc segment Dr. Merriweather from All Creatures Veterinary Center which is located on Lions Avenue in Newhall in the Victorian buildings very very nice setting and also don't forget that they are affiliated with and uh, partner with Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital, which is located on Solid Eye Canyon right next to Regal Cinemas. So you're covering the entire Santa Clarita Valley, right, Doctor? <laughs> we do our best. So, and, and All Creatures, though, is a 24-7 emergency center so that uh, yep. at 2 o'clock in the morning after the dog got into I the Christmas there. turkey uh, that hasn't been cooked... <laughs> you know that uh, you you are there to to help them out and ease their suffering Hopefully and pain. Hopefully, it's not still sitting out. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Please put the turkey away. It's been uh, almost two weeks since Christmas. But uh, let's talk about this and and holiday you know issues that might arise. Any anything exciting? Any cats eat any ribbons or anything like that? Uh, uh it's been a few weeks. I, I think. Um I think most people are at least aware of the potential. Uh, you know, certainly there are some cats that decide to scale the cr to scale the Christmas tree as a surprise. But um, <laughs> yeah. I think most people know if they kind of have troublemakers in their homes. In, in some in some cases, with that case, uh, the Christmas tree got it worse than the cat usually. But I want to talk also. Uh, you know, on that, it's good to at least catch up because it's been a few weeks since you guys been there because holidays fell on the Wednesdays yeah. this time. <laughs> But, you know, we, we've been pretty lucky here in California and Santa Clarita to escape the, the severe cold weather that yeah. they've had back east. And my cousin, who likes to post things that make you, you you're very, very sad for some reason, posted a picture of a meme on Facebook with all these animals that were out in the snow and saying, please bring your dogs Freezing. inside. But people 
forget to do that. And even out here that they should keep in mind the weather and especially because we will have another cold snap and it can get cold out here in the in the upper 20s. And that's that's cold uh, even overnight and things like that when it gets below freezing. So your animals that are outside shouldn't be outside, correct? Yeah, not only that, but, you know, people think like, oh, they have a fur coat. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they have, you know, most of them have some fur, some have less than others. Um, but definitely, especially pets that are kind of acclimated to living in the house, do not do well outside. Right. Um, especially when the, the weather is extreme. Not to mention, make sure the water dishes aren't frozen over. Yes. <laughs> that, uh, that doesn't do well. Although, interestingly enough, I used to have a fish pond out in my backyard. And it was in uh, like 2007 or something. We had a really, really, really cold snap. And the water was almost completely frozen over. And the fish survived. <laughs> well, I mean, it was almost frozen all the way to the bottom, and the fish survived once oh it knew them. But um, I was surprised. I'm like, oh, boy. But but that aside, I mean, even such the birds overnight uh, and rabbits, sometimes people keep them in hutches outdoors, depending upon where they live. you got to keep that in mind, too, with those types yeah, of exotic animals. Yeah, you get animals. the plan ahead for, for how, how you're going to keep the creatures. Now, what forever. about with snakes and their their kind of own climate control? Is that, is it, I mean, even indoors, again, because sometimes, like, I'll sleep with the heater off at night, and I get up, and it's 59 degrees in the house, which is pretty chilly until I turn the heater on. Yeah, so I, I think definitely remembering to, you know, we always talk about with reptiles checking your temperature gradient, you know, kind of from the coldest spot in the cage all the way up through the basking spot in the cage. Um, and yeah, remembering that, you know, the temperatures change not only by what time of the day it is, you know, so the nighttime temperatures versus the daytime temperatures, but also time of the year I can have a big effect, especially depending on how well insulated your home is. Well, that's true. We are going to be back with Dr. Mary Weather from All Creatures Veterinary Center right after this to talk more about pets and keeping them warm and or cool in the uh, changing climates. This is your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. You ain't nothing but a hound dog the crying time. You ain't nothing but a hound dog That's called multitasking. Yes, this is the Ask the Doc segment with Dr. Merriweather on your hometown station. And we are talking about uh, extreme weather that can affect our pets and all of our pets, including our birds and our, our cats and our dogs and our, our reptiles. Yep. And we are pretty lucky here in the Santa Clarita Valley <laughs> that we don't have... I was going to say, we know all about extreme weather in Yes, California. we are. <laughs> yeah, it's either warm or hot. But actually, no, we, we, have, had our, we have had our cold snaps, and, and it snowed in, in 2011, the very beginning of, of the year. We got like two or three inches. It melted the next day, and three days later, it's 75 degrees. But even still, you know, we don't it think... It hailed in, once or twice, too. Yeah, oh, it's, it's hail. It, it can't. <laughs> hail and 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 still even still when it gets below we have our, our times where it's in the 30s at night and some we've had uh times where it's gotten into the 20s we have our moments and we think that well my dog he's big he's got a dog house he's used to being outside and i admit i used to have a german shepherd that was mostly an outdoors dog and he was all right unless it was really extremely cold i now, now i wouldn't do that but but when i did uh, less knowledgeable about dogs when i was younger but really honestly we got to consider the fact that that they are as affected even with the coats and even with the the they're used to the outdoors that that will affect their health and and their yep. well-being and you know and, and even you know dogs that do well outside for a number of years they eventually go get, become older dogs and, you know, they're going to be more susceptible to and, extremes in temperature. And just as humans are, you know, if there, there are inflammation or arthritic issues that the, that extreme yep. temperatures can, can handle, and that's the thing. What type of treatment, I don't know that you, we, you may not get that many hypothermia cases or anything like that here in the Santa Clarita Valley, but are there treatments for that once? Uh, there, there are, you know, it, it kind of depends on how badly affected the pet is. Certainly, you know, we see frostbite in animals, just like, you know, you might get it as a person. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, we're, we're talking during the break about the cold snap that's kind of going across the eastern parts of the country. And in a lot of these areas, you know, they're actually better prepared for extreme weather than we are because we so rarely see it. And so kind of, you know, being able to make plans, you know, so what what are you going to do about your horse if it, you know, snows where you live? The, those sort of planning type of activities, you know, it's important to do here too. And that's true. And even going beyond just our, our little pets, our little yeah. critters, our lap critters. <laughs> we we don't want to talk that, about the big animals very often. Yeah. And the ones, well, yeah. And, you know, the ones that, that sit on our fingers, little birds or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, that's, it's really important. And also, of course, you know, as we get closer to summer, the things we consider too, but especially in the wintertime here. Uh, and, and we tend to take it for granted that it's warm, but we forget that even, even when it's 40 degrees outside or yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah. In the middle of the night, time. it's still 
still freezing cold here. Right. <laughs> and like with birds, for example, I mean, that's a good idea. Well, we talk about covering their cage at night for, for a lot of reasons. Is is that another thing kind of for insulation to, to keep them? It, you know, it depends on kind of everyone's setup. Like, for example, I don't cover my bird at home, but definitely some birds benefit from it. Um, and so there, there's kind of multiple reasons for it and multiple reasons against it, kind of depending upon your individual situation. I see. Um, I think more important is making sure that, you know, your bird's kept warm at night somehow. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> depending on your setup. So uh, that's an important thing to consider that not only birds, but everybody, that all, all of your animals, the temperature controls, you know, they need to be safe and warm too. Because, yep. you know, I mean, and, and we have that, that kind of thing, well, they're animals, right? But they, even still that we have brought them into our environment and no matter what their, maybe their, their wild sensibilities could be, or even hunting dogs or things like that, where they, they may have been bred for or can be bred for outdoor activity. If we have, since they were puppies, brought them inside or kittens, the same thing, uh, there's the same thing. They're yeah. used to that environment but they're acclimated just like we are. And, and not just that, but even, you know, even for our animals that, you know, can winter um, outdoors a little bit, considering how mild our winters are, you know, keeping in mind that, um, you know, even, you know, like say outdoor li livestock, like chickens that might be spending a lot of time outdoors, they're probably going to need more food right. during the winter, not just because their kind of energy requirements are going up because they have to keep themselves warm, but because their normal kind of grubs and insects aren't there. Right. For them to supplement with. So right. kind of, you know, keeping an eye on critters is, is really important. Well, that's, uh, that is absolutely true. Dr. Merriweather, always fun, always exciting, <laughs> always informative as well. All Creatures Veterinary Center, especially in the evening hours, if your dog or cat or bird or snake or uh, rodent or rabbit are not feeling well, Dr. Mer Dr. Uh, Merriweather is usually there to... Yep. See you on the evening <laughs> hours to take care. She does quite a, a good job. Now, All Creatures Veterinary Center is a 24-7 operation located on Lyons Avenue between Newhall Avenue and Main Street in the Victorian buildings. And then you have regular hours at Canyon Country Veterinary Center uh, located dogs on... And cats. Right. Outstanding, Dr. Merriweather. Always fun. We'll see you next week where we're going to begin to take some phone calls and things for questions from listeners about their pets. So we're looking forward Should to be that. Exciting. Thanks again for stopping by. Really appreciate it.